So today we're talking with Joe Simperman, the president of Global Cleveland. And Joe, you've got a, a big week coming up. It's your third annual, something called the Sister Cities Conference. First of all, what's a sister city? Thanks, Dan. It's great to be with you. And thanks for everything that you do with your family for clevelandpeople.com. Uh, clevelandpeople.com is such a great way for our international community to stay connected uh, within themselves as well as with each other. So thank you for that. Uh, Sister Cities is actually something that started under President Eisenhower uh, when the return of uh, the soldiers came from World War II. President Eisenhower, then General Eisenhower, had seen some pretty terrible things uh, in, in Europe. And his purpose of creating the Sister Cities when he became president was really to see how we could convey humanity to, to humanity, that we would never have the atrocities that occurred that occurred in, in Europe uh, from people to people. And so Sister Cities began, the very first Sister City uh, in the world was the city of Toledo, Ohio with the city of Toledo, Spain. And so then they began to grow and they began growing under all of the mayors across the United States and in Cleveland, our mayors, uh, whether it was Mayor Stokes or uh, Mayor Voinovich, uh, Mayor Kucinich, uh, or Mayor White, Mayor Campbell, uh, Mayor Jackson, each of them contributed to the growth of the Sister City movement. Mayor Perk was a big one in, in there as well. And, and you can see when you look at the mayor's administrations, kind of what their perspectives were. For people like Mayor Perk and Mayor Voinovich, who were so involved in the captive nations movement, they were establishing sister cities with places, Dan, that were part of the former USSR, right. places that were behind the, the Iron Curtain. And so, you know, places like, like Gdansk, Poland, uh, Ljubljana, Slovenia, um, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, Klaipeda, Lithuania, these were places that were firmly within the orbit of being in a, under a communist totalitarian regime. And there was an effort by those mayors to say, hey, we, we have to establish ties because so many of the diaspora of the Polish community, the Lithuanian community, the Slovenian community were living in Cleveland and they had fled that. Under people like um, Mayor White, he was looking for connections to places in Africa. So whether it was Kanakri, Guinea, or um, uh, the, the sister city with Bahardar in Ethiopia, it was this idea that Cleveland is a majority African-American city. The, the black community came from the continent of Africa, you know, under horrific circumstances, but how do we keep these, these ties together with people? And, and that was something that the mayor did along with Ibadan, Nigeria. And then you have Mayor Campbell, right? One of our, um, uh, the only female mayor, but a mayor who was very Irish and very proud of her Irish heritage. She's the one who established the sister city relationship with West Mayo, Ireland, right? With Mayo, which is where so many people who live in Cleveland who are of Irish heritage can trace their, their lineage back there. And then under um, Mayor Jackson, uh, he's done a few, um, probably my personal, um, one of my personal favorites was under him with Councilwoman Brady when Fear Albania right. was made a sister city. And then Dan, the uh, dedication of the Albanian Cultural Garden which was under a terrific fall Cleveland rainstorm. The worst weather ever, it was frozen rain, and, but the president and, of Albania came and the mayor of fear. And we were there together for what, Dan, two hours, yeah. all of us. And it was just, these things mean something. They mean something to the people who are from that community. They mean something to Clevelanders. And so what the Sister Cities Conference does is say, hey, we're a great city. We've got 24 sister cities around the United States, or around the world. We are one of the few cities around the United States that has these active relationships. And so how do we do this every year with a conference where we remind people in um, uh, uh, the sister city of Beit Shan Israel in Cleveland, the ties that we have. When we remind people of the sister cities, you know, in Lima, Peru, Volgograd, Russia, and, you know, you'll appreciate this, Dan. We, we did one conference in person last year and this year are going to be virtual. But even this year, the, the sister city from Vogelgrad, Russia, feels so strongly they're coming to the conference. We, this whole thing is going to be done on, on virtual, but under the leadership of Ken Kovac and all the great connections that Ken has and how he keeps that Russian spirit alive, they're coming. And what we're excited about is that next year, God willing, this conference is going to be 100% in person. 
I remember um, attending so, your, your first one in person down at the Clean Public Library and other locations. Yes. It was fantastic, the, the diversity there and the, the representation. You know, you, sometimes you have an, an event and a, a few people show, but with Volvograd and other uh, yeah. participants from all over the world, it was really impressive. So Cleveland's yeah, and, you got know, 24. Yeah, we have 24 of them, Dan. And, you know, they're, they're, they're live. I mean, you know, if we're talking about um, Madam Council General Ingrid Bubilis in Lithuania, right? If we're talking about um, uh, Council General Alenka Gierak from Ljubljana, right? If we're talking about um, the 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 um, the sister city in Bratislava, Slovakia, with with people, you know, like Paul, who are just doing amazing work in the in the Czech Garden and the Slovak Garden and trying to keep these ties alive, you know, it really becomes this thing where it it wakes people up to the fact that you know. A diaspora is only as far as as you as you don't stay connected. So these are people who have ties all the way back. And so I remember even just a few years ago, Dan, we had this um, uh, we hosted the, the the leadership from Ethiopia. And, you know, there we were at Empress Tay too. There we were at the Cultural Garden, the first cultural garden in Cleveland that had a, a nation from the continent of Africa. And, you know, these ties are real and, and people feel that. And so it's so important that we do that. And one of the things that we try to focus on during the conference is, you know, so what do we do to make this thing something that, that people feel is active? So obviously economic development, right? How do we trade trade um, ideas? How do we trade products? How do we create a, a system where, you know, we're helping each other's economies in Cleveland and in the sister cities? Secondly, educational exchange. I mean, my dream would be someday that kids from the Cleveland Public School District and other school districts around Northeast Ohio see these sister cities as places where they could go and learn, that they have a connection, that they, they maybe don't have a relative there, Dan, but they're still family. Right. And then the third, the third thing is obviously the culture, which is, you know, so much of the way that we communicate, even without using words, um, you know, through the, through the singing, through the dance, through the artwork. And, and I just feel really, really, um, I don't know. It's kind of emotional for me because my mom and dad are both gone now for, you know, over 20 years. And my mom was an immigrant from Slovenia. My dad was hundred percent Slovenian. Like I feel something when we're in these, in these rooms with people, because it really makes you appreciate where you came from, but it also tells people that there's a real reason today for us to keep these ties alive. And that's the sister cities conference. And we're grateful to mayor Jackson. We're grateful to chief McCall for all the, the, the care and the, the love they've given to these cities we're really trying to take that um, to the place where people feel really active and, and people feel, whether it's Vincenza, Italy, or, you know, other places like Mischkoltz, Hungary, people are really connected there and, and they feel a sense of, hey, I have some, you know, uh, roots in these places and, and get people to explore their past and, and their future a little bit more. Well, what I've seen, you know, there's there's various uh, relationships with the different summer, different sister cities, some are more robust and ongoing. Like, I know that there's been a lot of business done with Rouen, France, for example, under the Jackson administration. And of course, you've got a, a special place in your heart for Lujana. I know you have something now uh, with Vincenza going on, with Vincenza Italy coming up. We do. And, you know, with uh, Diana, who's this amazing Clevelander Italian, uh, she's got a story, Dan, I'll tell you, if you ever have a chance to talk to her about how her family in Italy basically put their lives at risk because they shielded American paratroopers who landed in their vineyard. And the Nazis were looking for them because they knew that there had been a group of paratroopers that had, had jumped from a different plane and her family hid these American servicemen in, in their house. And had they been caught, the whole family would have been executed. And so she has these deep ties, not only to Italy, but obviously to Cleveland where she was born. And she moved back to Italy because she runs these tours. And so she's doing this tour. Um, she were raffling off a tour to Vincenza, which is our sister city, but other parts of Italy as well, where two people, tickets are on sale on our website. They're hundred dollars a piece, but you think if you win, you know, that's, that's not bad for two people to be able to travel airfare, hotel, the whole thing. And as well as Diana giving the person the tour. And we're really excited about it because it, it makes people realize how alive it is. We had a, 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 a a uh, phone call, Dan, on FaceTime with the mayor of Vincenza, and um, he was at lunch. And so he's showing us everybody that he was having lunch with. He's showing us what he ate. Then he's walking back to his city hall and he's giving us an architectural tour. And we were just mesmerized because 
it's it's like and we were like right there and yeah. and he loves cleveland and he loves cleveland's italian community and you know he wants to come to the conference when it's in person because he wants to you know he knows those ties are strong and you know dan i just i'll say this to you and this is a moment of personal privilege but you know i've gone to many uh not all but almost many many of the um hall of fame events that you've done dan with your family with debbie and your mom the international hall of fame and i will never ever forget the the event that you did where you honored um basil russo and he came with maybe nine tables of tables like half the ballroom was the italian american community and he gave such a speech that only the son of immigrants could give and it made everybody feel of course proud for him that he had been selected proud of his italian heritage but proud of being american and it was just, it was, that was one of those moments, that one. And when you honored Dr. Mehta. Oh yeah. Who was just, I mean, and, and these are the stories, right? These are the, this is the story of immigrants in Cleveland. These people who come from, from situations where, you know, nobody wants to leave home, right? These people are leaving because of war or famine or, or they have to. And, and Cleveland's been such a welcoming place for them. And now they've made these lives here. And so, you know, the sister city experience is one that I think that tells people we have to keep moving forward in the future. And the way that we do that is by staying close to these places all over the world where maybe people had come from in the past, but now there's no reason why we can't make this, you know, something that's an exchange of ideas, commerce, you know, culture and and humanity. So can anyone participate in this conference and is there a fee and how do they do it and what can they expect? It's all yours for the low price of zero dollars. Uh, we try to keep it uh, very affordable. We do it with the Cleveland Public Library's incredible support. Um, we have this program called Hop In, where you can be on different in different rooms at different times at the same time. The reason we do that, Dan, is it's very accommodating because the, I was looking at the list uh, earlier this morning. I believe that we are in one day hosting. Um, 12 different time zones simultaneously. Wow. Wow. So, you, you know, you think about it with your, whether you're in Lima, Peru, or you're in Beit Shan, Israel, or you're in Volgograd, Russia, you're in Taipei, Taiwan, you know, these are sister cities and it's happening live. And so it's really important that we have the technology to do that. And so Hoppin's done that. Interestingly, anybody can participate. Anybody can sign up. If you go to globalcleveland.org, there's all the, the, the ways to do it. And there's a bunch of different conversations. There's conversations around education. There's conversations around economic development. We have conversations around sustainability, what different cities are doing uh, to, to, to be um, uh, think, thinking forward about climate change. Um, we have conversations with a group of Jesuit priests from around the world. Why? The Jesuits are an international order of Catholic Jesuit priests right here at St. Ignatius, John Carroll University, but they happen to be in places all over the world and kind of getting their perspective about what it means to be a global presence. How do we communicate with each other, whether you're someone in Nepal or someone in Peru? So this is what's happening. Some of the the things that people are going to see are from places that are even outside the sister city family, because Dan, I will share with you, it is, it is my humble opinion that if you have a cultural garden in Cleveland, Cleveland should have a sister city with you. I agree. I agree a hundred percent. And you know, Dan, it doesn't always happen that way, you know, and you know, all the work you've done for the Korean community, Dan, for the Vietnamese community, for the Uzbekistani community, Dan, what you've done for the Syrian community, you, I know it, I know what you've done. Those communities deserve to have sister cities. And my hope is that as we move forward into next year, you know, Mayor Jackson's retiring after 16 great years of service. We thank him. We appreciate him. We appreciate everything he and Chief Valerie McCall did. But there's quite a few places like Croatia, like Mexico. I mean, the one that really gets me every time, Dan, is we share an international border with Canada. And yet we don't have a sister city with our Canadian sisters and brothers. And there's interest on their part. So I'm really hoping that by this time next year, uh, in when we're doing our conference in person, we will have added some sister cities because we really need to kind of fill it out. And, and certainly looking at the cultural gardens as an example, but also the communities that are coming here. And you know this, Dan, from the, the coverage that you give growing Congolese community, growing Bhutanese community, you know, communities that are growing all over, growing Somali community. And so 
wanting to make sure growing Lebanese community, my gosh, you know, with Pierre Bejani and, and everything that's been done with the cultural garden there in the community, right? Dr. Abby Mina, all the, the leaders, right, of the community wanting to make sure that we match up our, our international um, thinking with the sister cities and with the 24 that we have right now, we're gonna have a great conference and we welcome everybody. Well, I'm excited and I'll be uh, trying to get through those 12 time zones. So basically we go to Global, Global Cleveland's website, globalcleveland.org and all the information will be there. We can sign up yep. and look at yep. the schedule and pick and choose and get online and participate next week. You right. got it. And then we just want people to hold the next year when we do it, we're gonna do it in person. And you know, look out, look out uh, cultural gardens, look out clevelandpeople.com, you know, look out all of our council generals, because, you know, if we get delegations from these cities, Dan, they're, they don't want to go to a conference. They want to see the city. They want to see the people. Right. So we're really excited about that. And we just, once again, I just have to say for clevelandpeople.com, for everything that you've done, Dan and your family, you guys have been just extraordinary ambassadors of Cleveland to the world and the world to Cleveland. And um, you are a true icon of this community and we're all very grateful to you. We appreciate that, Joe. And then what you've done with Global Cleveland, you've really taken it to exponential next level. So we appreciate it. We're looking for a great conference next week and we'll see you online next week at the Sister Cities Conference at globalcleveland.org. Thanks. See you, Jim. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Dan.